Hello and welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles. I'm delighted to be joined by Koji with his fantastic film, Macalise. But for those that haven't seen it, let's take a look at a clip. I'm delighted that you know during this uh, crazy year we're, we're making this virtual experience from from uh, Los Angeles through to Japan. So this is very exciting. Um, thanks for joining us today. Uh, <laughs> I have so many questions about your film, but before we get into it, um, tell us uh, for those people who haven't seen your film, tell us a brief synopsis. Yeah, well, Macalise is basically about. Uh, a tragic tale of mother and daughter told from a perspective of a reaper. So it basically, uh, without spoiling too much of the story, basically this reaper who's very cold hearted and very, uh, she, she hates human beings in general. Mm -hmm. And she believes that uh, given death is the best solution for all the sufferings. But once she meets this dying teenage girl who suffers from the guilt of leaving her mother behind, uh, she slowly starts to understand that, you know, suffering does have a meaning and also peace is not just like one form, but it has like many faces. There, there's so many parts about the film that I, I love. Everything from the cinematography to the score, to the acting, to the story. Like, there's so many things I'm looking forward to talking to you about. But before I get into all of that, I'm just curious, where, the, where did this inspiration come from in, in creating this story and turning it into a film? I think the very initial inspiration came from my uh, late grandmother. Uh, well, she, uh, she died when she was 89, so she was pretty old. And then uh, I remember the last time I saw her, uh, I mean, uh, she had cancer and also Alzheimer's disease, uh, Alzheimer's disease. So she was like, she was very confused and she didn't know why she was in so much pain and anything. And the last time I saw her, it was kind of like heartbreaking for me that, you know, she was suffering so much mm -hmm. and she was even crying and she was saying like, I want to die already. You know, I want to end this pain. You know, that's what she was saying. And that was very heartbreaking for me. But the next time I saw her, it was, you know, at her funeral. And I don't know, like, it, was, it had a very uh, kind of like strange feeling that I was like, in a way, I was very sad that she passed away. But at the same time, I was, in a way, a little happy that, you know, she was not in pain anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that uh, pretty much like in every country, every every religion has the same kind of belief that death brings peace. You know, that's why people yeah. say rest in peace. You know, yeah, yeah. We want to believe that those who die to you know rest in peace. Yeah, and they're no longer in pain. So like that was the initial idea, initial kind of like theme of the film. Then mm -hmm. um, I actually came up with the ending, the climax first. Yeah, and you wow. know. I don't want to like really talk, you know, about like what happens in the climax, yeah. but because it's gonna spoil everything. But mm -hmm. but I came up with the ending first. Then uh, I would say working on a commercial, like about like almost like four years ago, and my co-writer was on the same set. You know, he was a producer of the set. So I went up to him and talked to him. Hey, what do you think of this climax for this like story I came up with like right now? And I told him the story, then he said, well, that's a really bleak story, but I think it's going to work really well if you do it right, you know. So that's how I uh, came up with this story, yeah. Wow, wow, well, thank you for sharing that. And, and you know, I, I also had a very similar situation, my grandmother, so I can I can empathize with that. Um, you know, this, I, 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 I kind of love this 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 beautiful world that you took us into. I mean, the opening shots it were just mesmerizing. I, I mean, I know this is this is your country, but I was so moved. But and and the beautiful uh, visuals that you gave us with this wonderful score, which led us into these characters. Um, I'm, I'm just curious, like in terms of deciding where your setting was, 
uh, wh where was that and, and how much did that, how difficult was that process in, in, in great? Because you had a great location in both interior and exterior. Yeah, well, uh, we shot in a area called Nagano Prefecture, which is, uh, if you've seen uh, a film by Akira Kurosawa called uh, Dreams, that's yes, like, yes, yes. Yeah, have you seen that? Okay, have you seen the episode of the, uh, the last episode of that movie? They have it's a village that has like a very beautiful yes. looking rivers. Okay, we filmed in a city right next to the city, so we pretty much shot in the same area. Yeah, and so it's a it's an area that's kind of surrounded by uh, gigantic mountains, and it has gorgeous landscapes. Yeah, yeah. and then. I was actually looking for the perfect location for this film, and I actually traveled all over Japan just to find the right location. Oh, how great! Yeah, and then uh, I went there, and I don't know. I think I think the first thing that kind of made me realize this is a perfect location was that uh, I saw the sunset, you know, over the massive yep. epic landscape, mm -hmm. and that looked very, I don't know, poetic. And also at the same time, uh, when you actually go there in fall or winter, it looks very cold, but it has like really kind of like haunting beauty of very cold beauty of like darkness, you know? Yeah. So that's why I thought it was like the perfect location. And also uh, I wanted the characters to be in a very isolated uh, places, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. like isolated from other happy world, you know? Mm -hmm. So pretty much every character is kind of trapped in a very epic landscape. Uh, mm -hmm. Landscape. So like, that's what I wanted to do. So like, I found that location and I think the biggest challenge for the location was that it's the weather pretty much. Because oh, sure. it's in the mountain area and it rains a lot in Japan. So pretty much, uh, we only had like one sunny day, which was the day we shot the climax. You know, oh, we wow. were just very lucky. Very really. lucky. Yeah, we were uh, kind of preparing to shoot in the rain, which is going to be miserable. <laughs> it was in the winter, so we were very lucky. And also, uh, you actually see a lot of like really beautiful colored leaves, like mm -hmm. you know, beautiful contrast of like, cold blue cinematography to the very warm, like orange and red colors mm -hmm. and that was a total accident because uh, that winter was like the record-breaking warmest winter in Japan wow. so the by the time we were shooting there yeah we shot in the early November and usually in the November all the leaves are gone usually but that year we were just so lucky when we drove up there all the leaves were still there oh, so wow. that was actually a total accident but it worked really well Oh, fantastic. Well, I mean, yeah. you, I, it was actually quite shocking taking us into this beautiful landscape. And I'm I'm completely in love with Japan on the personal level. And I was just loving this place, this journey it took us on. It was almost shocking to go into a hospital, um, mm. you know, and, and, and a transformation from, from that particular scene because it just felt so, you know, far away from, from where we'd just been. And I, but I do love the way you did that. But Let's listen. Let's let's uh, your your cast, your 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 three, you know, the, the 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 daughter and the mother and and the Reaper. Like, wow! Like, I I, I love their performances. They carried so much of the weight of what they were going for in the film. The Reaper was such an interesting character, but the mother and daughter, you could feel them going through so much. How was your casting process for you? I got the mother part first, you know, and she had the perfect look and perfect personality. She's basically playing herself she's a very sensitive emotional person and a mm -hmm. very kind woman and then um uh, i was like a little struggling to pick uh the perfect actor for the daughter yeah i actually had two actors in mind you know and they both had different personalities and they were both equally very good with acting so mm -hmm. i talked to my co-writer kenta about it and one actor had a very strong personality like you could kind of tell that you know she has a very strong independent personality that's like very tough woman and the other actor who actually ended up casting yui she had like a more sensitive like uh softer personality so i talked to my co-writer as which character do you think would work better like more very strong 
character or more like a softer, more sensitive character. And I was kind of going for the sensitive character, but I wasn't sure. So I asked Kinta and he said, he actually agreed with me. You know, I think it will be more interesting if you have a very sensitive character, then I see her character arc transforming into something more like stronger to fulfill her destiny. You know, mm-hmm. so that's how I uh, ended up casting Yui Ota, you know, who played the daughter. And then I think uh, a lot of people commented that you can actually feel a lot of like really good chemistry between the mother and daughter. You know, that's because uh, I actually had them actually stay at a hotel, like very nice, a traditional hotel mm-hmm. um, in my city for like three days. And oh, they called wow. each other with character names. You know, they still call each other with the character names. That's today. so cool. I love that. <laughs> yeah, after two years. Yeah. Then um, I let them spend three years, uh, three days together so that they can have like a actual chemistry going on, you know, actual bond yeah. going on. So like, yeah, then they got along very well. So like they basically like they had a very good chemistry like throughout the shoot. Even mm-hmm. today, you know, when they meet each other, you, it's like seeing them alive and healthy and happy <laughs> you know then uh then uh first i got those uh two actors first then for the role of my least you know i actually did audition in la you know uh oh. diana who played uh the main character my least you know she lives in la she's from la but I-, I needed somebody who had the right look and who who has the right gaze you know mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then uh but because of the budget reason, I could not fly to LA to do the audition. So I asked my friends in LA to hold the audition in LA and ask them to bring a computer with them so that I can see the audition over Skype. Oh, wow. You know? So yeah, that's what I did. And you know, like then when I first saw her at the audition, you know, she had the right look and also she had the right gaze, you know, and all it felt that uh, she understood the character really well. You know, Mm -hmm. like a lot of actors were very good, but many of them kind of misunderstood the character, you know? Yeah. You know, they, many of them tried to almost act like they are some kind of like monsters or creatures or something. But Diana actually understood the character very well. And she was basically playing a human who is very cold hearted, you know? But that's what the, uh, that's the kind of character I wanted for this uh, for this character. So that's why, like, and I thought she was the perfect fit. And I um, love that you went the. I honestly, I'm so happy that you because mm-hmm. it really showed on camera, like the fact that you went the extra mile, you know, to have this environment for the mother and daughter characters to, you know, you know, have that relation. Because I was, conv- I mean, they were so convincing that they were mother and daughter. It was so convincing. Like it was yeah. like they would. You could feel. That, that very strong feeling of a mother's pain uh, and, and not wanting to see her daughter suffer. And, you know, it's interesting. I don't think there's not many films where someone says you've got to have the right gaze, but I completely understand from the perspective of the Reaper's character that, you know, you were looking for, you know, that, that, that certain gaze, that certain, you know, person that could understand the characters. So, so I mm-hmm. love that that worked out and, you know, for you too, but I must admit that kind of an easy having to, you know do video auditions you know you want to get that right person for the role too so but yeah definitely did um with the reaper i'm curious obviously the the mother and daughter relationship you know you you really nurtured that one to come together but yeah how how do you go about directing like a a reaper like what what, what was your process for that as a director (laughs) good question (laughs) well i never told her to be like a monster or anything you know but basically uh, it's a very, uh, it's it's not like a monster or anything. So like basically I direct it in a way I would direct uh, regular human characters, you mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. You know, so basically it's the same technique, you know. I directed her in a way that I would direct the mother and daughter mm-hmm. characters, you know. But uh, I think the biggest uh, part of directing the Reaper was the, giving her the right backstory yeah you know i mean i don't you really want to like spoil the backstory but it's not in the film but i had to make sure that she has a reason to hate human beings mm-hmm. and i had to give her a reason 
that why she would believe that giving death is the right choice mm -hmm. you know so that was like the big part of the directing and also like uh one interesting uh thing about directing the gaze was the instead of like you know you can never you never want to say anything like hey hey try to be more scary looking or anything yeah. like that but like one directing that i remember saying was like try to kill the daughter with your gaze you know mm -hmm, kill mm -hmm. her and choke her with your gaze you know that was like one of the directings i gave her so that's why like she's uh, her gaze looks so powerful and wow. scary at times it does so. it haunts me still i mean you know yeah I, what was fascinating I, I you know i love it when um new characters come onto our screen you're like i have never seen this before like i mm. i was like she could have been in a tv series it could be an extension feature is there any movement in this direction you want to kind of explore this this film or this genre or these characters or this character well technically like this character came from my last film the before uh, this film yeah Actually, I had the same kind of character, but the last character I had was like more like the complete version, you know, her mm -hmm. character arc was complete already because she was like the supporting character. But, uh, you know, I obviously didn't like the film that I made before. I made it back in like, I don't know, like five years ago or something like that. But, but I thought this character was kind of interesting. So I wanted to explore more about this character and what happened in her past yeah you know, as a reaper so that's how i uh ended up making this character and you know i actually thought about like making this into a feature but it, it would totally work as a feature or like a tv series and kind of stuff but you know for now like i'm like if somebody wants me to make a feature out of this i would totally do it but i'm still like not sure because like for me like this story is kind of complete already yeah yeah i understand yeah no yeah. i know what you're saying no i think the extension of the reaper was just so it was such a fascinating experience to see this this character but of course the the story with the actual storyline you know you, you will see when you watch it how it will unfold um what is um what is next for you though koji what is next well i just uh finished writing the first feature script like a rough draft of my feature script oh. and i'm hoping to like start working on that like hopefully like in the next two years or so you know and um it's basically again like i keep connecting my films like kind of like a marvel cinematic universe kind of in a way like uh i thought the the character in this uh film Achilles, you know you see the guy hanging himself killing himself yeah. you know he has no line or he, no dialogue or anything but you know you can kind of feel so much emotion and so much character from him Oh and yeah and surprisingly that actor who played the character you know ego his name is ego that was his first time acting like ever oh, wow. yeah that was his first time ever to be shot on camera to act in front of a camera you know oh, and it was like mind-blowing and uh, my dp nick you know who's shot many like even like famous hollywood actors in LA you know he was like very surprised he, he was like very impressed like he's a really good actor like you know then I told him you know it's his first time acting like today <laughs> you know? then like people were, like amazed by it and I wanted to make a film like starring him as the lead character and using his character in the film as a lead character more like the backstory of that character so I came up with some kind of like the revenge drama based on that character kind of loosely based on that character so wow. that will probably be the next project i'm gonna do that's yeah. exciting well i mean yeah. what i you know aside from a great story with some really interesting characters i honestly thought you created this amazing cinematic experience with a really fantastic score like it was you know, it was it was a, a really, you know, your film and the way you, you know, you shoot the film is, you know, it was just really had a lot of depth and vision in there. So I, I really enjoy the way that you do it. It was really fantastic. Um, but I, I'm just curious, like, I know, obviously, you, you've made a few films now, but, you know, I, I just wonder if you have any advice out there for, for any filmmakers, something that's kind of important to you or, or things that you try to follow through with on each film or, or maybe things that you've learned along the way. Is there anything you could share with other filmmakers? Yeah, sure. Um, I think 
the biggest thing that I really care about whenever I make a new film is that have I seen this kind of film before? You know, mm -hmm. I think that's the biggest part of this film because when I uh, first wrote the script, uh, when I first came up with the story, I didn't have the Reaper. You know, I didn't have the lead character. It was just the story about daughter, mother and daughter, which is good enough. But I felt like, you know, I've seen this kind of film before. You know, mm -hmm. I have to kind of like, like make it more unique and make yeah. it something that I have never seen. But, you know, so that was like the biggest thing. And also, uh, also like um, me and uh, my DP Nick, who actually lives in LA, you know, and we talked about uh, not being afraid of going super dark, both visually mm -hmm. and like thematically, you know, mm -hmm. and not many films try to explore the expressions of shadows and darkness, you know, yes. you know, especially like, uh, I mean, like it, this kind of visual does not work with comedies or like romantic movies or anything like that, but it's a very heavy, bleak uh, human drama. And it's kind of loosely based on like, uh, you know, horror, horror stories, you know? Mm -hmm. So like, we wanted to explore the darkness, you know, going yeah. like extremely dark. Yeah. And that's a very, in a way, that's a very risky thing. Like if you underexpose anything, you cannot like fix underexposed shots in post, you know, but we intentionally underexposed many of the scenes and in many of the shots, you cannot see the characters' faces, you know, they're completely covered in shadows, you know, that's the kind of like risk we took, but it worked very well, you know. It, no, it really did. And, and yeah. I'm so glad that you mentioned that for someone that programs a lot of film festivals and, and mm -hmm. watches a lot of films for interviews, like I haven't seen your film before. And that was what was so great to see. It's always so invigorating to see something new and something that's not been done. So, so you achieve that definitely. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so so no. yeah, I would totally say they just take, take a risk, you know, let's go yeah. risky, you know, like yeah. what do you get to lose? I mean, you would lose money, but like, yeah. you that's know, all you lose. Oh, journey, right? <laughs> you're, you're not going to die from taking a risk doing yeah. something, you know, in filmmaking. So, yeah. I love that. Well, well, listen, I, I, we really appreciate you bringing your film to us at New Filmmakers LA. Looking forward to having you with us in person at some time again soon. But, but, yeah. but thank, you, thank you very much. And yeah, uh, thank um, you. Best wishes. And we're looking much, looking forward to seeing next more of your work. So thank you. Thanks yeah, thank you very much.